is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to our Pentecost service for Sunday the 5th of June 2022. There are just a few notices. We have a Jubilee community picnic and barbecue this afternoon between 2 and 5 p.m. Do come along and if you can offer any help either setting up or during the event or afterwards, that will also be much appreciated. And on the 18th of June, that's a Saturday at 2pm, we have the Jubilee Fun Walk, which is in aid of our building project. 
and it will start from Christchurch. Father's Day cards are available for sale in the lobby. So if you can visit church and select your Father's Day cards, that would be lovely. And finally, Catherine's licensing takes place in Chelmsford Cathedral on the 25th of June. Details of how to apply for tickets are shown in the notice sheet. And we will be having a barbecue to celebrate Catherine's achievement after the service on Sunday the 26th of June. Let's take a moment now to compose ourselves for worship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts, teach us to pray, lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the reign of your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and for the example of loving and faithful service which she has shown among us. Help us to follow her example of dedication and to commit our lives to you and to one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we come to our confession. So let's just take a moment in silence to think about our week and the things that we need to confess to God. And then we'll join this general confession together. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have failed you, as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to watch a video about the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. After that, John will do the Bible readings for us, and then Margaret will preach. 2022 marks the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, a celebration of her 70-year reign. Queen Elizabeth II became Queen in 1952, aged just 25 years old. She is Britain's longest-serving monarch. The Queen was born on April 21st in 1926, when she was 10, her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated, and her father became King George VI. In 1947, the Queen married Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, and they were married for 73 years until his death in 2021. The Queen has four children, eight grandchildren, and 12 great-grandchildren. She has seen 15 Prime Ministers come and go. Although the Queen is over 90, she still works many hours each week. She is consistently kind, hardworking and respectful. She bestows honour on those who make great contributions to society, but she also pays tribute to ordinary people whose work goes unseen and unrewarded. The Queen does her duty to her country cheerfully and faithfully. The Queen is also a Christian and has always been open about her faith. Six months before her coronation, she asked the people of the Commonwealth and United Kingdom to pray for her, that God may give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making, and that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. God has answered these prayers over the last 70 years, 
throughout much tragedy and change, including her children's divorces, the death of her former daughter-in-law, Diana, Princess of Wales, and the death of her husband, Prince Philip. Throughout all these trials, the Queen's Christian faith in Jesus has kept her going. In her 2002 Christmas Day broadcast, she said, I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. In 2014, she called Jesus her inspiration, role model and anchor, who stretched out his hands in love, acceptance and healing on the cross. Jesus is the king of all kings and queens, the ruler, reigner and creator of the whole world, yet he came to serve, not be served. In 2011, the Queen spoke of our need for salvation from our recklessness and our greed. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive. Her faith has shaped everything she has done over the last 70 years of her reign. So as we celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, we honour her for the past 70 years of service, devoted to both her country and God. And we thank Jesus, the King of all, for our Queen who serves her King. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God will say, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The second reading 
is taken from John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 8. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we thank you for this uh, wonderful Jubilee weekend and the celebrations that we've all enjoyed. And Lord, there's another celebration that we are remembering today as well, the celebration of Pentecost when you sent your Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray that you will light the fire in our hearts this morning to receive what you want to say to us. We pray, Lord, that we will hear and respond to your word in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, it's a, been a bit of a momentous weekend, hasn't it? The, Her Majesty the Queen has now reigned for 70 years, uh, the longest reigning British monarch. And it's also her official birthday, but it's also the birthday of the church, the festival we call Pentecost. For those who aren't quite sure what Pentecost is all about, this was the Jewish festival, also known as the Feast of Weeks, because it celebrated the end of the grain harvest, which was seven weeks or 50 days after um, Passover. Um, Passover was just after Passover was when the grain harvest began, and now 50 days later, we have the celebration of the harvest coming in. The Greek word Pentecostos means 50, uh, so that's where we get the word from. During the festival, the Jews would bring their first crop of wheat to present before God at the temple, and they would also, in their temple services, recall the wonderful story of God's faithfulness bringing them to the promised land. You or I might tell our individual story of our journey of faith, but at the Jewish festivals, they used to tell their national journey of faith. And in doing so, they would pass this on to the next generation. And this meant that they would never forget where they had come from in the past in order to continue to be thankful for all they had in the present. So they would not only go up to the temple singing psalms and reciting prayers as they went with their gifts of grain, but the day after the festival, there was also an opportunity to celebrate and party with family and friends. I think we can already see that there's some similarities with the Jewish national celebrations and our celebrations this weekend. Nations get together to celebrate key moments in their life and history. So what happened at this particular Pentecost when everyone was gathering for the festival in Jerusalem? We have to go back for a moment to uh, remember what Jesus said to his disciples before his death and resurrection. 
In the closing days of his ministry on earth, Jesus spoke several times to the disciples about the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So we usually call the Holy Spirit He. Jesus called the Holy Spirit another counsellor who would be with his disciples forever. And Jesus promised that all that he had been to them during his three short years on earth, the Spirit would be exactly the same, always and everywhere, just as he was. He told the disciples that the Holy Spirit would guide and teach, encourage and rebuke, strengthen and empower. He would be the spirit of truth. He would teach them all things and would enable them to remember what he had taught them so that they could pass it on to others. Jesus said that our relationship with God would begin when we are born again because without being born again, we cannot see the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said. But people tend to scorn the uh, expression born again Christians, don't they? And they think that uh, somebody made this up, but it's actually what Jesus said in John 3. And there we read about a Jewish religious leader, a Pharisee called Nicodemus, he came after dark to speak to Jesus because he was afraid of being seen. We don't know what happened to Nicodemus afterwards, but he was certainly moved by his conversation with Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, to uh, ask Jesus questions. And hopefully he came to faith um, and believed that Jesus is the Messiah. So back to the day of Pentecost, Jesus had promised before his death that the Holy Spirit would come upon the disciples. He'd recently ascended to heaven. The disciples had elected a new disciple, Matthias, to replace the traitor Judas. And as good Jews, they were now gathered in a house in Jerusalem to celebrate the Pentecost festival. They were remaining faithful to Jesus and trusted that what he had told them about the coming of the Holy Spirit would happen. And happen it did. A noise like the roaring of a windstorm filled the house where they were sitting and they saw what looked like tongues of fire settling on each one of them. When God moves in a powerful way, people are immediately attracted to him. And sure enough, all those people in Jerusalem who heard this noise came running. Every known nation was represented at this festival, yet they found they could understand each other's languages. How incredible is that? Some were amazed and then something else happened. Peter, the one to whom Jesus had said, get behind me, Satan, when Peter said he wouldn't allow Jesus to die. Peter, the one who had denied knowing Jesus after his arrest. Peter, the one who had taken his eyes off Jesus on the Sea of Galilee and started to drown and Jesus had to rescue him. This same rough fisherman, untrained for public speaking, now filled with the Holy Spirit, stood up and addressed this huge crowd. He spoke eloquently, quoting from the prophet Joel, convincing 3,000 people to repent of their sins and to be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. He promised also that they too would receive the same gift of the Holy Spirit that the disciples had just received. So there was a double symbol of harvest on this day of Pentecost, not just this harvest of wheat, but there was also a great harvest of souls. 
The disciples became the greatest spiritual revolution the world has ever seen. When the Spirit came upon them at Pentecost, nothing could stop them. Threats, imprisonments, beatings and killings. Their enraged opponents even had to acknowledge that these timid, ordinary men and women had turned the world upside down. Devoid of any human resources, the disciples were totally dependent on the power of the Spirit of God. Christians today have unlimited resources. We have books, we have the internet, we have online sermons and teaching. But sadly, we have to acknowledge that the Spirit's power is much less in evidence, despite the need uh, being greater than ever. Do you remember during COVID, we kept hearing about the R number? Well, a study by a mathematician at the University of South Wales analysed data from 13 Christian denominations to calculate the R rate. If you remember with COVID-19, an R number of more than one indicates that the disease was spreading rapidly while less than one indicates that the disease is dying out. So this mathematician, uh, Dr. Hayward, applied the same model to church attendance. For churches, he calls the R number the reproduction number, the rate in which new people join the church. He analysed Church of England and Roman Catholic churches and found that they have R numbers of just over 0.9, which means that our congregations could vanish by 2062. The Church of Wales had the lowest R number of 0.7, which meant it could die out as soon as 2038, just 16 years time. However, Pentecostal and Evangelical churches have R numbers of between 1 and 1.1, which means they are growing. We are on the Evangelical wing of the Church of England, so there is hope for us. Well, models like this are based on lots of assumptions and random events and uh, inaccurate data can skew the results, so don't be too alarmed. But the church is definitely not growing at the rate it was on the day of Pentecost. Her Majesty the Queen was called to duty 70 years ago, not because she wanted to, but because it was her duty by reason of her birth. I prefer to think that the abdication of Edward VIII was God's will for this country the past 70 years may have been very different under a king who was unsure about the Christian faith. I believe that the promises the Queen made in 1953 to serve God and her people cannot now be called into question. History has shown that. She has continued to proclaim her faith in her public speaking, by her example, by her church attendance, whilst at the same time she has always acknowledged that other faiths have value and are part of our modern society. The Spirit of God is most definitely in our Queen. Someone else who was called to duty 70 years ago was a Dutchman called Andrew who is now 94 years old. He, like the Queen, responded to God's call. Many of you will have read the book, God's Smuggler, written by this man in the 1980s and who became known as Brother Andrew. He tells in his book of the prayer he prayed to God in 1952. Whenever, wherever, However you want me, I'll go. That was his prayer. He called his response to God the step of 
yes. That prayer in 1952 started a lifelong adventure, smuggling Bibles to the persecuted church throughout the world, particularly to the Iron Curtain and the Soviet Union. He founded the organisation called Open Doors, which provides Bibles, food, training, legal support, emergency aid, whatever is needed to help the persecuted Christians stand strong in Christ and to reassure them that they have not been forgotten. At her coronation, the Queen was asked by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Madam, is your majesty willing to take the oath? And the queen answered, I am willing. Part of the oath was, will you, to the utmost of your power, maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel? During her reign, the queen has accomplished many things which people said were impossible. I watched one such event earlier this week on TV when uh, she shook the hand of Martin McGuinness, the IRA leader who was said to be responsible for the murders of her uncle, Lord Mountbatten, his grandson, a 15-year-old schoolboy who was just helping out on the boat, and the 83-year-old dowager Lady Braybourne. It can only be by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Queen is able <coughs> to forgive so graciously. I, for one, am very glad that we have a Queen who has a strong faith and been an example of faith throughout her long life. And that faith has influenced many other people. In contrast, Brother Andrew was the son of a blacksmith, one of six children who didn't even finish high school. But God used this ordinary man with a bad back, with limited education, no sponsorship, no money, and he went on to do things that many said were impossible. Brother Andrew has been able to spread the news of the gospel because he also said yes to God. He made himself open to the same Holy Spirit that, that enabled the fisherman Peter to speak with such boldness at Pentecost and the same Holy Spirit that has enabled our Queen to conduct her life and faith with such grace. The Kingdom of God has already come on earth. Christ reigns but the battle is still raging. Peace will come when Christ returns and the whole earth will come under his realm. A realm where every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We celebrate D-Day when Britain and the Allies landed in France but in fact, the victory was not won for another year, not until VE Day. There were still months of battles to be fought and many lives were lost, but no one by then doubted the outcome after D-Day. Jesus Christ won the D-Day victory at Calvary, which determined the final outcome. But the church is still called to be God's army, assaulting the citadels of Satan and extending the rule of God till our VE day when Christ will come again and evil will finally be put down. Jesus extended his kingdom every time he healed and set people free from their afflictions. And the Holy Spirit working in believers pushes back the frontiers of darkness. Speaking of his approaching death and triumph through the cross, Jesus said, now the prince of this world will be driven out. The process of driving out still continues today 
and we are his Christian soldiers who must be actively involved in the battle to drive out evil and proclaim the rule of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's sometimes hard, isn't it, to share our faith with other people. We worry about what people might say to us. Will they ridicule us? Will they not want to be friends or associate with us anymore? We have to remember that it's not you or I who does the work in people's hearts. It is the Spirit of God who does the work. We just have to be who we are and when appropriate, tell others our story of faith. God will do the rest. A colleague of mine, when I worked at Prison Fellowship, tells his story of faith, which began when his younger Christian brother, a timid young man, turned up at his door one day and shoved a Bible into his hand and said to him, God told me to give you this. Now, my colleague Noel had been imprisoned for something that he didn't do. And he came out of prison very angry with God and everyone else. He didn't trust anyone. But that day, what changed his mind about God was that his quiet younger brother so faithfully handed him that Bible. He knew what it must have cost him to walk up his path and knock on the door and hand him that Bible. Noel became a Christian because of what his brother did. And Noel went back into prisons telling his story of faith. He went to churches telling his, uh, giving his testimony and he changed the lives of thousands of people. That's what the Holy Spirit of God can do. We're being given an opportunity on the 9th of July to share Jesus with our family and friends. There's this event that's happening at Sun Corner called Love Essex. There will be several uh, just 10 minute talks by an evangelist, Andrew Cannon. And it's quite a low key event with food stalls and there's fun and there's music going on at Sun Corner during the afternoon. So please be prayerful and listen to God about who you might take along. The Holy Spirit has been active among his people from the beginning of time. But after Pentecost, he came to live in all believers. For those who hear Christ's words and understand the Spirit's power, the Spirit gives a whole new way of life and enables us to do things for the kingdom that we never thought possible. John 14, 12. Jesus said to Philip, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. Amen. In this glorious year of the Jubilee We give thanks for her majesty In honor of the faithful hearts Who chose to serve and to play her part Many nations have gathered Mountain heights with the sun we Celebrating the answer call Blessed with prayer and sacred bone Rise up and stand Is the call we hear With hope in our hearts Joining as one, making
Thank you, Margaret, for that interesting sermon. We are now going to say our affirmation of faith. If you would like to, please stand. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Catherine is going to lead us in our prayers. As today is the day of Pentecost, I'm starting with the prayer for today, the Collect for Pentecost. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we celebrate the Platinum Jubilee, a prayer for the Queen and country. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we celebrate Pentecost and the Platinum Jubilee, we know that there are many areas of the world where this is not a joyful weekend. We continue to pray for Ukraine. In the words of the Archbishop's Prayer, God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for your precious children, at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And having highlighted Ukraine, we now pray for the peace of the whole world. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all, the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the world, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward, till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our own church and community, we pray for those who are unable to celebrate or who do not feel joyful due to illness, or bereavement, loneliness, or the rising cost of living and other money troubles, unemployment, exam pressure, uncertainty, or fear. And we pray for those who seek to bring your hope 
strength and comfort, your joy into the lives of others, for carers in care homes and in the community, for doctors, nurses and other health professionals in hospitals, hospices or the community, for clergy and ministers, for family members and friends, for the food bank, for street and school pastors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves, that as we celebrate and enjoy ourselves, we may show your love and joy to all who join us today, especially at the community picnic this afternoon, and that we will continue to show this love and this joy to all, day by day, week by week, and in the words of the Collect again, Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen all your children with the gift of faith and revive your church with the breath of your love and renew the face of your earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we look forward to revival and renewing and the coming of God's kingdom, as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we give thanks for Her Majesty's service to us all, let us dedicate our own lives once again to the love and service of God and our neighbour. And we say together, Lord of our lives and Father of all, grant that our thanksgiving may prove itself in service to you and to our Queen, our country and one another. For your name's sake. Amen. And now we're going to hear or join in with, if you'd like, let the flame burn brighter. We'll walk the land with hearts on fire And every step will be a prayer Hope is rising New day dawning, sound of singing fills the air. Two thousand years, and still the flame is burning bright across the land. Hearts are Let the flame burn. 
And as we come to the end of our service this morning, I'd like to say thank you to Margaret for her sermon, to John for the Bible readings, and to Catherine for her prayers. Please pray for us this afternoon as we prepare for the Jubilee party and for all the things that happen at that party as well. And if there's anything you need, please contact the church office. And so our closing prayer today. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and accord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and evermore. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>